Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Nice to see you back. Hope you had an amazing Makar Sankranti and Bihu festival. And somebody asked me, can I make a video on Maran Karak planets, Maran Karak Sthan? And recently, Amanji had made a video on his channel, and Gitan Shuji had spoken just two, three days back. So when I saw, I suddenly remember that, yes, for many days. Maran Karak Sthan. <laughs> so we will discuss about death of planets. <laughs> Not our death, death of planets, of course. All right. And uh, the topic is very scary as the word sounds, you know, Maran Karak, which means death, but it doesn't mean literally that something dies. So, for example, if somebody's Venus is in Maran Karak Sthan, it does not mean that your spouse will die or you should not get married okay nothing like that all right so as usual if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me regarding your modern color planets then you can go to the description section of my videos down to find the link to my website and god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him even if you have so many planets in modern karak sthan Okay, so what, what is Maran Karak and what, what actually means when you say a planet is in Maran Karak Sthan? So it's Maran Karak Sthan. Sthan means house. Okay. So therefore, whenever we are talking of Maran Karak positions, we always refer to houses, not signs. Not signs, houses only. Okay. Do not be confused with the signs and the houses so therefore uh, it is said that certain planets are in if they are placed in certain uh, houses it is as if the planet is dying or what actually it means the traits which that planet represents you may feel as if when you try to get those things you are dying or you feel as if it's not solving the purpose, right? So death can mean many things. Essentially, which is the house of death? It is the eighth house, basically. Twelfth house is physical death and eighth house is the feeling of, uh, eighth house is that feeling when you get, when you go to the graveyard. Eighth house is the graveyard, as I call it. Smashan. So therefore, uh, the, the planets sometimes, give you give us death in two ways one is the death related to the 12th house where the the person which that planet represents so suppose somebody seventh lord is in maranakarak then the partner dies or you know, the partner it's like saying the partner partner has died so it is also meaning that uh the partner is not there for them which means maybe they never get married or something like that and on the other hand it's like uh uh, eighth house death which means the person is there but uh, it is as if the person is not there or it is as if you never met the person all right that's like the eighth house uh, you don't die you get separated from somebody okay? that could happen even by staying together so this means either you could you 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 don't find somebody or even if you find uh, you get separated later or, or even if you don't you stay together but there's no fulfillment, all right. So that uh, the Maran Kala can mean in different ways. So don't just interpret it in the sense of the twelfth house that my Venus is in Maran Kala Sthana, so my spouse will die. Nothing like that, all right. It depends on the chart what happens at the end. It is, and as usual, we must remember that there are multiple houses in astrology which are related to one event. So we should never forget that. So for example, if you talk of marriage, the, sec the second house, seventh house, fifth house, ninth house, and the eleventh house. These five houses are very important when it comes to marriage and the lords of these houses, including Venus, irrespective of whichever lagna you are. Okay. So that means now imagine when when we say that uh, my Venus is in Maran Karak Sthan and that's why I will never get married, 
it's like saying you are just seeing only one and then sometimes people wonder oh uh, the person got married but how because venus is not the only planet which decides marriage or relationship there are so many other planets also which have a say in relationships okay or marriage especially so now suppose you have a great venus and <coughs> and you have uh, your uh, seventh lord in maran karakstan that could have a totally different meaning if your second lord is in maran karakstan it could have a different meaning if your fifth lord is in maran karakstan it could have a different meaning within the context of marriage all right so if your seventh lord is in maran karakstan don't think that you will never get married or as i I'm saying for the third time, if your Venus is in Maran Karakstan, then don't think that your marriage will not work because check all the pointers and every house has a different uh, reference for the same event. Okay, so for example, why do they say that the second, fifth, seventh, ninth, and eleventh house? These five houses are the houses of marriage. Primarily, it is the second, seventh, and eleventh, but why five and nine also? because first of all what is marriage the contract the deal that you sign uh, and the vow that you take uh, is actually the seventh house okay uh, in front of the priest or the pandit or during nikah for the muslims or for any tradition basically seventh house is basically the uh, consent of the society all right that we will we take a vow in front of agni and all the society people that we will stay together for the rest of our life at least in the very context that is what is said and that is actually literally the event of marriage okay but that's not what marriage is that is more of the wedding thing ultimately marriage is the family which is the second house so if your seventh lord is in maran karakstan then it would happen that it is a bit difficult for you to find somebody but suppose your second lord is well placed because marriage is ultimately what family right you want to uh, have children basically that is the uh, end goal of marriage so many times people ask me this question you know that um, actually i am married but i don't want to have children you know is it okay so again uh, strong things here you know uh, that that is not very much recommended because uh then your life is just like the life of dogs or you know animals in fact they also produce children so uh the only difference between humans and animals is the scriptures say that humans can uh, focus on spirituality the animals cannot so one of the essential principles is to have children after you are married so uh, we cannot live like uh, dogs or animals you know then that is sinful actually because if you are having sex and you are not having children then you will get karmic consequences for that and this is not some uh, moral policing or religious uh, threatening or something like that this is basically common sense because the man is wasting the semen because the semen has potency there are there are a lot of souls in the semen so if you are wasting the semen even by uh, watching pornography or by just uh, masturbating then uh, there are terrible serious karmic consequences which are awaiting you because you are wasting the arrangement which nature has given for you to uh, for a particular soul to be in a particular life span all right so so therefore as i said if the uh, second lord is well placed then it could happen that once you are married then the married life is good or maybe may not be that the married life is good maybe you argue or there are a lot of heated debates always you know or you don't like each other maybe but when it comes to a family unit you are very strong and there is no question of uh, separation or, or you know divorce or something in fact the word divorce is not there in the vedic scriptures okay it is not there it's a artificially manufactured word which is only there in the constitutions of the different countries it's just like a law you know which is actually very stupid because uh, there is no concept of divorce in any scripture basically now, at least in the vedic context it is not there so uh, once married it's like for eternity for at least for till the time you stay so this is what can happen if the seventh lord is in maran karakstan but the second lord is not okay now if the opposite is true then 
It's very easy for you to get married. Seventh Lord greatly placed, but second Lord in modern Karakstan. Wow, difficulty to have a sense of belonging and the family, right? And oh yes, I forgot to say uh, which are the houses uh, for the planets for modern Karakstan. So there are a lot of uh, ambiguities regarding these houses, but I will tell you all the things which uh, people say. So for example. Uh, for sun, they say it's the 12th house. 12th house is the Maran Karakstan. And for moon, it's undoubtedly the graveyard, of course. It's the 8th house. And then for Jupiter, it is the 3rd house. I will also explain in short why these houses. And um, sun, moon, Jupiter. Then for Mars, it is the 7th house, of course. Then for Mercury, it is now... For Mercury, some say, you know, it's fourth house. Generally, they say for Mercury. And some also say that Mercury also dies in the seventh house. And for Venus, yes, undoubtedly, it is the sixth house. Then for Saturn, it is the Lagna, the ascendant itself. And for Rahu, it is the ninth house. And for Ketu, some say it is third, some say it is the fourth. Okay. So these are uh, on a broader spectrum you can see. So did I cover Sun, Moon, Jupiter, Mars, Mercury, Venus, Saturn, Rahu, Ketu. Yes, nine covered. So now why why these planets uh, feel as if they are dying? So so Sun is basically the ex, the ex, the conception of being in this world, and that's what the lagna is. That is why sun is the karak for the lagna. So when sun goes to the twelfth house, it is like saying uh, your you yourself are denying your own existence, which is like very, which is very weird because you came here to exist. So, uh, and when I say existence, it's like physical existence. Okay. So why will you deny your own existence? So that's a very weird position where sun is in. So sun is like. My duty was to give, but now I have to take away because 12th house is physical loss okay, of anything basically. Then moon, of course, moon is the other, the graveyard, you know, not physical loss. It's like emotional suffering, turmoil, you know, turbulence, you know, unhappiness basically. And that is why 8th house is the perfect house for the moon to go uh, and feel as if it is dying there. And then for Jupiter, of course, there's no doubt. It is third house because third house is the original sign of Gemini, which is the house of prostitution, basically. And third house deals with uh, superficial things, basically. All right. Third house deals with things that are not very conducive for uh, for spirituality. All right. And that is why you will always see if you are too much grazing over, you know, social media and all this, you know, your mind gets disturbed because Rahu gets exalted there in Gemini. All right. So third house should be used, but to the extent it is required, not that you're just doing whatever you want in the third house, you know, then you will fall into the trap of Rahu. So be careful with the third house. Then Mars, Mars is the planet of Brahmacharya, celibacy, preserving your semen. So when it goes to the seventh house of marriage, it is like uh, forcing a bachelor to get married. And for Venus, it's opposite. Venus wants to be married. Uh, but it's like telling a person who is obsessed about marriage uh, to stay single in the sixth house. Okay, That's the house where Venus feels as if it's dying. And then, yeah, so there are many reasons why these planets get uh, Maran Karakstan in these houses. And we can discuss about them later in detail. But the point which I'm trying to stress here is, if you have a planet in Maran Karakstan, then don't think that everything which that planet signifies is finished. So let's talk of finances. So sometimes the 10th Lord is in Maran Karakstan. Okay. So that does not mean you will never become famous. Okay. Because there are many houses of fame. It is the Lagna, the, the second, the sixth, the tenth, and the eleventh. So you will never find any horoscope where the Lagnesh, second lord, sixth lord, tenth lord, eleventh lord, all these five lords are you know in modern Karakstan. You will never find it. So 
you will never find anybody who is uh, who has never become famous in their life i mean not like some politician or some film star but in general you know somebody may become famous for one day some video goes viral you know maybe they have their third lord well placed connected with the 10th or the 11th and the eighth house is also involved which gives you know sudden unexpected things so that's an example well, so you you will rarely find any person who has you know, never come into line like never ever because you will never find any chart where all these five lords are badly placed which means so if five planets are in Maran Karakstan, it's like saying you know half of the horoscope is in Maran Karakstan, okay which never happens generally so now what to do if you have a planet in Maran Karakstan? what to do well if it is then we need to be realistic with our expectations pertaining to that planet okay it's very simple no no complications no complicacy there it's very simple so venus lording the sixth or sitting or conjunct or aspected by the lord of the sixth venus anything to do with the sixth house related to venus gives a feeling as if venus is dying not only venus is sitting in the sixth if Venus is conjunct with the sixth lord, even then this feeling could come. Okay, because many times people tell me, Oh, my Venus is in seventh house. Why do I feel as if you know this is not working? And then I said, Madam, sir, the sixth lord is also sitting with Venus. You've got to see that also. You cannot whenever it comes to Venus, the greatest challenge is the sixth house. Because sixth house means you you got married to somebody who doesn't like you or who you don't like or if the eighth house is also involved then there could be hatred and if 12th house is involved there could be violence okay so but primarily it starts from the sixth house you know because you will uh, you will most likely uh, not hate somebody that you don't like you know so not liking somebody is different from uh, hating so i i may say you know i just don't like somebody but it's not necessary that I hate the person. So hatred is more of you know eight house, and when that becomes more and more and more anger comes, and then I say you know oh, I don't like this person, or I will go and beat this person. So that's like the next level. That's like the twelfth house. So and that 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 so that is how you have to understand. You cannot just uh, sit with the sixth house. Okay, my Venus is not in six, so that's great no if venus is aspected by the sixth lord then also to some extent you might get these feelings okay so similarly it is with mars so if suppose your mars is conjunct the seventh lord because mars dies in the seventh house so the seventh lord is like the planet which can give a feeling to mars as if he is in maran card okay if he associates with mars all right so then it could happen that uh, you 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 want to do certain things individually independently but then you are forced to work with somebody in a team so then what i have seen with these maran karak plants is that uh, we should not artificially try to uh, negate the effects of that maran karak planet in fact I, I i have seen you know best is to flow with the flow you know so for example uh, suppose somebody is uh, Mars is you know uh, with the seventh lord I have seen then I mean that's fine you want to do things individually independently now collaborate and do with somebody else there you have to be a bit humble you know you have to tolerate you know so there's the challenge so rather than escaping that and not doing that and still doing it individually even then you will face more difficulties because your karmic path is designed in a way that you may feel that oh when i'm with this person i'm not able to do my task okay but if you try to artificially negate the karma and you know run away and do these things then it doesn't work like that because whatever is there in the horoscope your karma will always pull you in that direction always remember that okay so therefore we should not artificially pretend uh, about uh, these maran karak planets that uh, first of all that they are very bad or something yes there are challenges but you have to see uh, to what extent is the problem there so for example as i said when it comes to marriage so for marriage there are so many houses linked okay and yes regarding 11th house i forgot to say why is 11th house linked to marriage 11th house is generally linked with any house because it is the gain of the lagna 
okay and in marriage uh, it shows a essential element of friendship which is there okay so uh, now for marriage the sense of friendship and family which is second and the eleventh for the seventh is very important so if you have your second and seventh lord well placed but the eleventh lord is not well placed then you could feel difficulty in relating to your partner as a friend okay so therefore similar is with childbirth the second house is important fifth house is important ninth house is important the eleventh house is important when it comes to childbirth okay so if your fifth lord is in uh, marn karakstan then don't think that you can't have children okay yes you may have difficulty in having children but suppose the second lord is well placed then once you have the children you will have a very good connection and a very nice family atmosphere okay if the ninth lord is well placed then uh, you will have a great sense of uh, that pride of your heritage will be there you know protecting your customs and traditions and culture so that comes from the ninth lord which your father is giving you or is supposed to give you ideally all right so this is what i had to say about marn kar planets so you have to analyze the planets um, on a holistic level not just individually you know for god's sake don't think that your 10th lord is in marn karakstan so you will never have money okay it is not like that your 11th lord will be well placed or your second lord or your sixth lord or your lagna lord will be well placed okay so therefore uh, we, we will always have mixed placements in astrology so you will never find a chart where you know all the lords of the marriage houses you know second fifth seventh ninth eleventh they are badly placed you will never find it okay somewhere or the other you will find there are some good placements and that is where is the challenge of an astrologer to guide the person accordingly which means if you see that the seventh lord is in marn karakstan then you have to see is the second lord helping or is the 11th lord helping is the fifth lord lord of the trines are helping marriage or not where is the lagna lord placed all right so that will tell you to what extent this seventh lord in marn karakstan will be troublesome for marriage or for getting married or the event of wedding so we need to check the overall horoscope and then only make a judgment and only by that we should try to help somebody not by just seeing oh you have you know uh, moon in eighth house so you will always be crying you know yeah i have seen people you know asking these questions you know the, oh my god sir my moon is in eighth house you know uh, i will always be crying or what in my whole life and most importantly you must check the dashas because sometimes when you make the mahadasha lord as the lagna lord so uh, which means suppose your jupiter is in uh fourth house for example and your uh venus is in the ninth house okay now when jupiter mahadasha gets active the fourth house becomes like the lagna then ninth house is sixth from the fourth so venus goes into marn karakstan there all right so marn karakstan should also be interpreted from the lagna because from the mahadasha lord sorry wherever the mahadasha lord is placed okay so because that for that time that is like uh, the that's like the king the mahadasha lord is like the king he is like he is sitting in the throne and whatever he decides happens because mahadasha represents the atma and antardasha represents the mind and pratyantardasha represents the body all right so uh um, therefore a venus in the ninth is a great placement provided there is no planet in the fourth because when that planet gets active in the mahadasha you might have difficulties related to venus all right now if venus is uh, now if the fifth lord the seventh lord second lord eleventh lord are well placed uh, from your lagna chart or from the mahadasha lord then this venus will not have many difficulties even though they have it will have but uh, it's not that the marriage will collapse or something like that okay so that is why whenever somebody asks uh, how will be my married life you know for next 30 years so if you know they have dashas like you know if there is a long planetary dasha like saturn then it doesn't matter because it's like 20 years but if it is you know like sun moon mars or you know ketu you know, these are small small dasha periods so then you have to check the planet in the 7th the lord of the 7th from the mahadasha lord all right 
so that will give you a uh, clues of how the marriage life can have ups and downs all right but the ultimate flavor will come from the main lagna which means if uh, if somebody is second lord and seventh lord and eleventh lord from the lagna not from the madasha lord all three are badly placed then inherently it is very difficult for the person to be happy in married life irrespective of whichever dashas the person gets okay but again as i said you know it will never happen that all the lords of the second seventh eleventh from the lagna are badly placed so that that's how life is life is very complicated and so is astrology and uh, so we should try to ask the right questions you know so now for example after watching this video you will ask me oh uh, my venus is aspected by six lord you know will i have a divorce and then i'm like what is your lagna i don't know your where is your lagna lord i don't know where is your seventh lord i don't know which planet is in the seventh house i don't know and how in the universe do you expect me to give a reply to that question that my venus is aspected by the sixth lord will i have a divorce i cannot answer that question sir or madam whoever you are all right so ask the right questions and then i will be able to answer otherwise i will just uh, have to leave the comments as usual there all right thank you very much for your patience and uh, if you want a consultation from me regarding your uh, barn card planners then you can always go to my website down in the description section and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him and yes if you're new then please uh, like this video or subscribe to the channel and then like and share the videos all right thank you very much see you soon again